Regular season baseball finally kicks off this Thursday. I love spring training, but I'm so glad it's over. We've got regular season, meaningful baseball kicking off in Houston this Thursday on March 28th. And in celebration of that, we've got you guys with a very special video. The Yankees are going to have a very interesting and fun year. Whether it results in a World Series or not remains to be seen. But we've got Juan Soto. You've got the return of so many familiar faces. Some guys hoping to have some rebound years. And really put past them an ugly 2023 season. This should be a lot more fun than last year. As we're expected to be right in the thick of a pennant race. As the Yankees try to go out and win their 28th World Series title. Which is a them for the last 14 years if they want that to happen they better hope that everything i say today comes true because today in celebration of opening day being this upcoming week we're gonna go through five of the spiciest takes we have for the yankees so strap on in get your angry comments ready because today we're counting down five hot takes for the yankees this upcoming season For our first hot take, we have Glaber Torres winning the Silver Slugger Award at second base. Last season was a huge one for Glaber Torres, even though it was a lost year for the New York Yankees as a whole. The sure-hitting second baseman cut his strikeout rate down to a career-best 14.6%, while hitting the second-most home runs in a season for his career as well, with 25. The second half is where he really erupted, driving the ball more in the air while maintaining those contact strides, and as a result, posting a 144 WRC+, plus with a 504 slugging percentage after implementing a toe tap to help him on two strikes. His improved mechanics have given him a chance to have consistent game power while also running some of the best contact rates in the league and he is an all-around threat for the Yankee lineup. Entering the final year of his rookie contract, the 27-year-old could have a monster season as he'll want to make the big bucks with a long-term deal somewhere and in order to accomplish that, you've got to shut your doubters up. Zips has 80th percentile projections publicly available for every player and if Gleyber Torres reached his 80th percentile projection, he would slash 294, 365, 505 with a 136 OPS plus which would certainly put him in contention for the Silver Slugger award. While there are some serious boppers in the AL like Jose Altuve and Marcus Simeon, I think this is the year of Gleyber Torres and that we'll see him have a career year and push the Yankees to try and keep him long term. 2023 was arguably the most impressive version of Gleyber Torres I've ever seen and the Yankees could have their leadoff hitter with him as well as while DJ LeMahieu and Anthony Volpe are always seen as the likeliest candidates, I think Torres fits in just as well as those guys do if not more. We could also see him as their five hitter, clearing the bases after Soto, Judge, and Rizzo, so that should be a ton of fun to watch as well. I know everybody picks on the errors, and while he is not a good defender, he is still a consistent three-war player, and this will be the year he surpasses even last year and shuts every hater up with a Silver Slugger award. If you thought the temperature was hot, we're about to take it even hotter. Austin Wells will make the 2024 All-Star team, and here's why. The left-handed hitting catcher is one of the most exciting prospects called up last season, and while he got off to a slow start, he heated up down the stretch and showed off excellent power and hitting abilities. The defense behind the plate is improving, and last season could be a sign of things to come for the former first-round pick. Austin Wells is an aggressive hitter, but has also shown the ability to work walks as well, as he does incredible damage on contact, while also driving the ball in the air, most notably to right field, which is really exciting for a ballpark like Yankee Stadium, where that's going to play well. He's a powerful hitter who could surpass the 20 home run threshold and that's pretty rare for a catcher and for that reason I think he'll end up making the AL all-star team now will he be a starter probably not because you have Adley Rutschman he is an MVP candidate and he's in your own division and there are certainly other great catchers in the American League you have Yanni Diaz Kyle Raleigh you have some younger guys like Bo Naylor who could step up but I think Austin Wells will get in the all-star game and I think that he's going to have a big year sure there is some swing and miss in his profile but if he can be a little more patient and hone in on those swing decisions while driving the ball to right field consistently we're going to see the numbers reflect the talent my concern isn't necessarily the quality of player here but rather the playing time as it's unclear how many games will start early in the season with jose trevino behind the plate i could totally see austin wells playing himself into more playing time and gradually becoming a bigger player on the offense and the definitive starter behind the plate and there's a lot of confidence on my end that he'll be a difference maker as well so far in spring training we've seen an improvement in his chase rate while also maintaining an aggressive in zone swing rate and i think the better swing decisions and the improved patience 
coupled that elite power should result in a higher OBP. I also love the underlying data from last year. He had an expected 283 batting average, and that was well above what he actually hit, which was below 230. So I think he's naturally due for some positive regression. And again, when we're talking about hitters built for Yankee Stadium, Austin Wells checks every box. So I know the Yankees are excited for the hitter he can be in 2024, and he'll be heading to Arlington in July for the All-Star game. Let's turn up the heat on the hot takes here with one of the hardest throwing pitchers in baseball in Luis Heal, as we think he'll strike out over 150 batters in 2024. Announced as a fifth starter by Yankee manager Aaron Boone yesterday, the hard throwing right hander has an excellent arsenal that is built for swings and misses. He is one of the most talented pitchers in the league from a stuff basis, and while that sounds like an exaggeration, if you look at his pitch metrics, everything is elite. The foundation of your arsenal starts with your fastball, and there are few fastballs in the league as good as heels. Following Tommy John surgery, he's returned to the mound with a power fastball at sitting at 97 miles per hour, but the 6.7 feet of extension give it an extra half tick on it as well to opposing hitters. At 17.8 inches of induced vertical break, it's one of the best strikeout pitches you can have, and his slower slot release should make his fastball an even better pitch up in the strike zone. It's a high whiff offering, and it's never been a problem for him even when the fastball wasn't being commanded well early in his major league career. We'll get back to the command in a second, but the biggest improvement he's made in terms of his repertoire comes with the development of a changeup, which has become an elite secondary pitch for him as he has reliable command on it and can get swings and misses to put away left-handed batters. It's always been an issue to strike out lefties for him, as he's only struck out 22.4% of them in his career with a 17.2% walk rate, and now in spring training, he's striking them out at an incredibly high clip because that changeup can put them away. His slider shape has also shifted as well. It's a firmer gyro slider, and while I'm not necessarily sure that's an improvement over his sweepier slider, it is a pitch he can command reliably and significantly more, and that might help him in the long term. Luis Heal has elite level stuff, and looking at his location plus, according to Eno Saris' metric, it's above 100. Now, it's barely above 100, but even league average command for Luis Heal will make the rest of his arsenal that much better. His stuff plus sat at over 130, he is one of the most electric arms in the organization, and if he can get around 110 or 120 innings pitched, I think he'll smash this number. If we extrapolate his career strikeout per 9, which is 11.61, and multiply it by 120 innings, we get 153.8 strikeouts. So look, the Yankees are going to be very careful with managing his innings, but I think they're willing to push him as far as his health is willing to go. I understand that that sounds risky and it definitely is, but the Yankees have shown an ability to build guys up reliably. So trust me, everybody at Fireside Yankees will be seated for the Luis Heal breakout season and hopefully he's able to reach the 150 strikeout total. Hey, Sam, tell me who we're talking about. Hey, we're talking about Daddy Stan today, baby. That's right. We're talking about Giancarlo Stanton. And for our hot take, I think he's hitting 35 home runs this upcoming season. Now, there are a lot of improvements we've seen in spring training, most notably an increase to his sweet spot and line drive rate, which should increase his ability to hit for average and generate batted balls that drop for hits. Now, that sounds simple, right? Increase the batting average and you become a better player. But his batting average decline has been the biggest reason that he hasn't looked like himself over the last Last two seasons. The line drive rate is up from 12.5% in 2023 to 30.6% in 2024. I don't think he'll sustain that, but if he were to sustain it, it would be the highest mark of his career. The ground ball rate is just 22.2%. I think that'll be a big improvement for him because ground balls are the enemy for Stanton. He is simply not fast enough to handle that. And we've also seen a reduction in swing and miss and strikeouts. He has a 13% strikeout rate in spring training, which wouldn't just be the lowest mark of his major league career. He has literally never had a strikeout rate this low in spring training. This is an unbelievable development for him. And I'm not saying that Stanton is going to have a breakout year this upcoming season or that he's going to have an MVP season, but I do think he'll have a phenomenal year with the Yankees because I think Think that the changes he's made are tangible. I think these are legitimate improvements across the board, and if even some of these changes are to stick, he's going to have a big year. I'm not saying he's going to hit 30% line drives and strike out 13% of the time, but what I am suggesting is that if he hits more line drives, if he hits for a higher average, and he can maintain the power that we saw him have last year where he hit 24 home runs across 101 games, then 35 home runs seems pretty likely. Again, every projection system has him under 30 
35 home runs, and they should. He had a really poor year last year, and they're not going to be able to account for changes in spring training, number one. And number two, I wouldn't change a projection model based on spring training results, but what I am saying is that based on what we've seen in spring training, based on the swing path changes, based on the way he's looked, I think there's some reason to believe he's due for a big season, and I'm going to buy all the way in on the Stanton train after being all the way out all off season. and yes, Daddy Stanton is going to be laying the law this year, and he'll be hitting 35 home runs. For our final hot take, we have one that, honestly, this is the one I wanted to get out. This is the one that I wanted everyone to see and hear, and it is that I think Clark Schmidt will be the Yankees' best pitcher in 2024. Now, I'm not putting this take out there to say that the rest of the rotation will be disastrous, but rather that Clark Schmidt is going to have a breakout season. Another asterisk I need to throw out there, I think Garrett Cole will outperform Clark Schmidt on a per-rate basis, but Clark Schmidt will pitch so much that it will overtake that value. The stuff across the board is up for Clark Schmidt, and the right-hander is throwing some impressive pitches, with a sinker and cutter being even harder than it was last year, the movement profile is kind of improving in terms of his fastballs and breaking balls, the sweeper is getting more glove side movement, the curveball is getting a little more glove side movement as well, the sinker and cutter are moving a little better, and the development of a split changeup should also help him get lefties off his back because they really hammered him last season. Clark Schmidt made 30 starts for the first time in his career, and right now is the only pitcher coming off a 30-start season that is projected to be in the Yankees' rotation on opening day. His durability is a huge part of this take, but it also comes from what I think will be a breakout year for him. His stuff plus on each pitch is improved from last year, and the movement profile should be better suited for handling left-handed hitters who gave him fits last season. We know that the addition of a cutter was supposed to help him on that front, but it just didn't get the job done. Now, he's getting a little more vertical ride on it with, again, firmer velocity and a lower release height, which could allow it to play better up in the strike zone. Now, he is performing better against lefties this spring compared to the regular season last year, but he also performed well against lefties last spring as well, so I'm going to take a grain of salt in terms of his results against lefties and say we've got to wait and see for the regular season, but I think that his north-south profile has gotten a lot better with the cutter and curveball getting better, and he obviously still has that east-to-west style with his sinker and sweeper. This could be a huge season for Clark Schmidt, who has a chance to climb up the ranks of the rotation, and he's never been one to lack confidence either. We know that as a player, he thinks he's one of the best in the sport, and we know that he can compete in these big spots. He's improved a ton. We saw him get better with sequencing down the stretch, but that came with declining velocity and declining strikeout numbers as well. Now, it's a matter of being able to prevent damage contact the way he did down the stretch last year, while also getting a good amount of strikeouts. Better stuff and improved command should be the two reasons why you bank on Clark Schmidt getting better, and I truly believe this is his year. This is the best his arsenal's looked, this is the best his command has looked, now I hope this is the best that he'll look at the major league level with a breakout season. Clark Schmidt, you'll be the top dog on the New York Yankees this season, let's ride. Will I be right? Will I be dead wrong? Probably dead wrong. But you guys could let me know in the comment section below. Drop a comment. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you enjoyed today's video. And you guys can check out other content we've got cooking on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and of course this YouTube page. EmpireSportsMedia.com is where we have all of our written coverage of not just the New York Yankees, but all of your favorite New York sports teams. And if you guys are into sports betting, you guys should check out Fireside Bets. We've also got betting content on the Empire Sports Media page. We've got our Latter Day Challenge starting, so don't delay and get caught up on what we're doing ASAP. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Ryan out.